This is our FM radio receiver kit, and as with all our kits, it comes with clear, detailed instructions in English. And as ever, all the parts have been carefully checked and packed. Now today, I'm just going to open one up and show how to make it step by step, and at the end, I'll show you how to use it, and I'll talk a bit more about the kit as we go through the video. So, let's get started. The first thing I've done is to open the package and spread the various parts out on a flat surface. Now in our kits the components are separated so they're easy to identify and in this one there's the battery holder, there's a cleaning pad, there's a pack with the LED transistor, two diodes and resistors in it, so more or less the same things, and there's a pack with the capacitors, the inductor and the crystal in it, and then there's a third pack with the PCB the socket and the buttons ready to go. So that's all you need to make it and of course there are the clear detailed instructions in English. So what do we need to what do we need to actually make the kit? We need first of all a soldering iron. I've got a nice temperature controlled soldering iron here. But any soldering iron will do. Uh, some solder obviously, a pair of wire cutters and some tack of some kind. This is blue tack as it's branded in the UK. Might be called something else elsewhere just to hold the components steady and hold the board steady while we solder them. So now I can go on with the preparation ready to solder the parts to the PCB. Okay so I've checked the parts in my kit. I'm looking at the instructions and I'm about to start. And the first thing you'll notice is that the HEX3653 chip which is what does all the radio decoding, is already soldered to the board. This is a tiny little surface mounted chip, so it's best to have it ready soldered because that's really quite difficult to do and it makes the kit, the rest of the kit assembly very straightforward and uh, hopefully it'll all work first time. So the HEX3635 is what they call a system on a chip, a whole FM radio receiver in one small package. And you can connect this to headphones which act as an aerial or an antenna or you can connect it onto an amplifier and make your own uh, portable radio like people used to have. So it's a very useful, versatile little board. So let's go on now with the construction. And the first thing to do is to take the cleaning pad and give the board a good wipe because any grease from your fingers or any dirt will stop the solder sticking. And the first thing we're going to do is start with the resistors. They're all the same, R1 to 4, 10K and we just bend the wires at right angles to the body of the resistor. You can do this by hand or with pliers. Tack the resistor to the board, solder the legs, and then cut off the excess wire. You can do more than one at once if you want to save time. Next, I'll do the capacitors. There are five of them. For C1 and C2, check the polarity. The ground side is marked as negative on the PCB, and this is shown on the capacitor as a gray line. Follow these with the inductor, L1. Now L1 is green, it looks like a big resistor, but it's an inductor. And the diodes, D1 and D2, soldering them in the same way. And there's just one transistor, labelled Q1. Now for this, you'll need to bend the outer legs out and down. Just keep the leads short so they fit neatly on the board, and be careful not to give this component too much heat. They are delicate. The crystal, labelled Y1, solders upright to the board but leave a little length in the lead so it can be bent down slightly or even flat to the board. The LED shows when the radio is switched on and when you connect this make sure you have the long lead connected to positive and the short lead to negative and you can push this right down onto the PCB. The five push buttons are soldered in a row at the top of the board. The pins are aligned in pairs moving from left to right. Now don't put them from top to bottom, do them left to right and a pair of pins should be on each side of the rectangle printed on the PCB. This is followed by the 3.5mm audio socket which is marked phone on the PCB and that has five pins to be soldered to the square pads. The last component to fit is the single row four pin header labelled ASW on the board. Make sure the longer leads are at the top of the PCB and avoid overheating this as the plastic surrounds can melt or the pins can move if it gets too hot. When it's cool, place the jumper so that it connects the middle two pins. And this tells the chip that the earphone lead is acting as an antenna. Finally, finally, to get power to the circuit, strip the wires coming from the battery holder and solder the red one to positive 
and the black one to negative in the rectangle on the PCB marked PW. So, plug in the headphones, turn it on. In and around Falkirk, have been told it could and take see days to restore. What I can hear today. Two men have admitted conspiring to offer bribes to professional cricket. That's the BBC News at three minutes past four. Our next yep. up five. I really enjoy using this kit. I love the sound quality and I especially like listening to music in FM stereo. It's a great little radio. So I hope you found this video useful. And if you have, maybe please give us a like. And perhaps you'd like to subscribe to our channel where we do lots of videos about the electronics that we use and that we sell here on our q26.co.uk website. That's q26.co.uk. So anyway, we'll be back with more videos soon and thanks for watching.